welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Work. Work is not only a source of income and a reason of stress, worry and exhaustion on the one hand, satisfaction and fulfillment on the other, but also a great conversation topic that fills our lives on a daily basis. We are all aware of it, no matter how hard or easy it may seem. We might even want to tackle the issue when it's the right time. In today's video, I'll be giving you plenty of words, graceful verbs and expressions to help you feel more confident when you take part in a work-related conversation. So let's get started, shall we? Before we start off with a proper list of words, I'd like us to go over two terms that basically define the world of work. And I'm sure you know them. They're employee, employee, and employer, employer. Careful pronunciation for both of these words. Employee is that person who works for somebody or for a company in return for wages. Whereas employer, employer is that person who employs people for his company. And our first expression is a strong work ethic. Strong work ethic which means a set of values that every employer is looking for in a potential employee. It's a trait that you must possess to be considered for an open position. Usually, employees with excellent work ethic often make the best members of the team likely to achieve the company's goals for being reliable, dedicated and disciplined regardless of the number of positive traits that an employee possesses or the job or the position that they occupy, well, the trial and the error process is a must-have in a working field. And our next expression is, as you have imagined, a trial and error process. Trial and error is that way of achieving a goal or solving a problem by trying repeatedly and learning from the mistakes you make. Whenever you want to break a bad habit or anything that affects your personal development, adopt the trial and error method. To reiterate, learning from experience is the best way you can achieve your aim. Moving on, how can we prove that we have the necessary skills for a particular job or position? Well, it's our next word on the list, credentials. There are those documents that state the abilities and experience of a person, including the fact that they're qualified for a particular job or activity. Here's an example. Only those candidates with the proper credentials will be eligible for the vacancies in the IT department. Once at the workplace, you will be likely to raise issues and state freely and clearly what you think. That brings us to our next word on the list, the verb to advocate, to advocate, which means to publicly support or suggest an idea, development or way of action. Mr. Lewis will remain a conservative who advocates fewer government controls on business. There are times, sadly enough, when abusive employers may take advantage of employees who don't speak up for themselves. For instance, being asked to work overtime to finish a project without extra pay means a direct violation of employee rights. It goes without saying that unless the worker advocates for himself, the boss will most likely continue the harmful behavior. And how can you possibly not get peeved, upset, or annoyed with your boss if you know that what you do is out of passion and you're cut out for your job? To be cut out for a job means to have exactly the right qualities for a particular role or job. But unfortunately for others, however much they might be trying, 
they simply aren't cut out for that job. Our next word on the list is the phrasal verb to nail down. It's used informally when talking about decision making. If you nail down an arrangement or decision, you agree or decide to the details of it. We need to nail down some of the details for tomorrow's meeting. When would it be convenient for you? Time to get a little bit more serious with a phrasal verb to leak out. Leak out. If a secret document or piece of information leaks or is leaked, someone lets the public know about it. I don't want any information leaked out. If this happens, there can be a large loss of revenue for the entire company. You'll be at risk of losing your job. On a lighter note, we're all part of a big team and it's so reassuring to know that we can count on its members, right? Our next phrase is exactly for this. It's all taken care of. It's all taken care of. It's used in situations of big stress, including hard work and planning. So reassuring to know that it's all taken care of. It means that it's out of your hands. You don't have to do anything else because someone else has already done it for you. Or they're doing it right now. Let's take a look at this. Mrs. Barber, should I order additional stationery for the conference? It's all taken care of. Make sure you're keeping an eye on the catering suppliers. Forces United, we all feel much stronger at the workplace and able to deal with difficult situations successfully. Our next expression is exactly for this type of situations. To get something up and running. To get something up and running. When a system or a place is up and running, it means that it operates normally. We're trying to get the internet up and running again. We all know that online sales can lag behind because of this issue. Next, we have the phrasal verb to work off. To work off. To get rid of something by effort. He worked off some of his energy by digging the garden. When everything's going well at the workplace, it's all smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. What a beautiful expression showing easy progress of an activity or a process without impediment or difficulty. Let's hope from now on it will be smooth sailing once we have the budget approved. Moving on, we have another advanced verb, to command. To command. To formally praise someone or something. I want to commend you on all your job as a head of department. Further on, you can refer to somebody's commendable work or worthy of praise. Your commendable work has earned the admiration of the entire company. When it comes to work, things aren't always as easy as they seem. Our next expression is so interesting. To let something slide. Let something slide. It means to allow things to go without punishment. Or just pretend that you don't see certain things so that you can protect yourself. I don't want to sound rude, but it seems we're letting things slide here. Am I right in stating that Mr. Thomas misunderstood the guideline in the second paragraph? What if we all follow this tiny piece of advice of the workplace? Wouldn't it be a lot easier to let a couple of things slide? Finally, it's time to round off our beautiful list with a phrasal verb. To lay down. To lay down. It means to state something plainly, especially as an official rule. Our boss walked in and said sharply, time to lay down a few ground rules. That's when we understood that work in that office wasn't something to be kidding on. There you have it, a complete list of words, phrasal verbs, and expressions to be used when taking part in a conversation related to work. Hope I could be helpful to you one more time. And why not showing it to me with a like, share, and subscribe? <laughs>
Thanks so much for being here. And remember, your feedback, comments, or just a simple hello are welcome. Always. Until the next one, bye.